I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. It is now 2021. And uh, everything's completely different and better. Yep, it absolutely is. <laughs> So, uh, on New Year's Day, not New, not New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, um, my my therapist basically told me, John, you really shouldn't be alone on New Year's, yeah, uh, for reasons that are outside of the scope of this podcast. Um, so I was like, yeah, you're probably right. So uh, I went into Kingston. Wait, are you about to tell me that you were one of the Planet Fitness? Wacky, waving, inflatable, air balloon, flaily, flaily. Bo- like, did you show up in a Planet Fitness? Wait, wave? what? Wait a second. What happened? All right. L- let's put my story on the back well, burner I, for I, a, fl- a split wait, second. Did you not watch any of the New Year's Eve uh, stuff? No. No, I didn't. Because oh. I-, I was about to oh. tell you why I didn't watch any of it. Oh. But continue. I'll let you. Continue. I'll let you. Let me. I, this is something I'm going to. After this, I'll send you some, some videos from like. The, okay. So. There were no crowds allowed. What they did have is yep, they, yep, if, yep. You're, if you're an essential worker, they put the street, you know, those like stand up fence um, street barricades that and they put along sidewalks in New York City sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd make, make a box of four of them. So there was okay. an adult playpen. So there'd be, there were these little groups of adult playpens awesome. that had groups of like four people in the middle of the street. And then there was like performers performing to like 10 people and okay. split up in different groups of playpens. And then right. because there was no crowds, all along the streets, you know how like car salesmen have like, whoosh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. The, the but it was sponsored yeah. by Planet Fitness, so imagine <laughs> just like thousands of um, inflatable balloon men with the Planet Fitness brand on their forehead. That's phenomenal. and that's the crowd, and then you've got like performers performing to a group of ten people, and then just a bunch of inflatable humans flailing I, their arms. I'm not gonna lie, I really really it like i've never performed i've given speeches i've talked in front of large crowds yeah but large crowds i don't know are if, better than small groups by the way yes that is absolutely true um that is uh, wonderful that sparks it, joy it was fucking nuts that marie kondo sparks joy for me um let me let me look at oh my god what <laughs> what i i'm having a moment i'm having a fucking moment i didn't even know they had versions that had hats that had top hats they have top hats i i will say i did go online to look if i could buy them and i can't find a way to buy them because uh, I, I wanted to well, put one in front of my house god damn it um so uh that that's wonderful it's that's more joyful than what i did so okay so my joke was that you dressed up as one of those people and now okay we let you pick up on your story you had uh, jokes are best when explained i want to point out like, yes absolutely the best uh so <laughs> i had gone into kingston and yes. i went to look for because i'm a nerd uh, I went to look for Thrust, which is a Voyager class transformer that is selling for ridiculous amounts of money, uh, okay. despite being currently released. And I've already explained too much. So I uh, I picked something up for one of our mutual friends uh, at the mall that he had asked me for. Drugs? And, huh? Drugs? Uh, no, no, no. It was... Um, I, it was the Lord Zed Rita Repulsa two pack. Oh, uh, okay. So I picked it up for him because I had gotten a gift for one of our other friends, which is a poster from a concert in which a man had been bitten, uh, and I had neglected to buy him uh, that poster as well, even though I had it. 
So after a decade, I finally uh, gave him the poster. Do we um, know a werewolf? No, no. Th- this this individual was probably high on something. Is uh, my assumption because uh, this was this was back in 2010. So yeah. That's that's prime uh, weird designer drugs territory. Yeah. Uh, so, regardless, I bring the I bring the Rita Repulsa Lord Zed two pack over. Yes. And the poster, and this mutual friend is watching Power Rangers in space. So I sit down on the floor. Watch and start watching Power Rangers in Space with him. Yes. I started on episode like nine or ten. Uh-huh. And then it was nearly the Alien Ranger arc when I left. So I had watched <laughs> 20 or not, not Alien, Psycho Ranger arc. I watched nearly 20 episodes of Power Rangers oh, in Space wow. in one sitting on Christmas Eve. The only reason I left <laughs> was not because I was tired of watching Power Rangers in space, because I probably would have continued watching it. I left because my cat needed to be fed. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So I am, I had a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Brandon? Eventful? Uh, eventful, uh, uh, not depressing at all. What, whatever the opposite Z. of an erection is. I don't know. Have you seen Have you seen Astronoma? She's kind of hot. Astronoma. All right, hang on. How do you spell that? Astr- Astronoma. Astronoma. Oh, in like, Just, in like a Borgy kind of way, yeah. Which Which version are you seeing a picture of? Uh, she looks kind of like the Borg from uh, Star Trek. She like pale and has like a thing on her head. Oh, you're you're looking at a different. You're looking at the. After so spoilers for Power Rangers in space, she gets turned into a robot person at one point. Um, but she's got a non Borgy look too. She wears a oh, lot of wigs. Hair? Yeah, she wears a lot of wigs for some that's, reason. That's too wiggy for me. I, well, there's also her not wearing a wig as well. So, anywho, uh, listen, she's she's attractive. Diva Tox is there too. Diva Tox is attractive. Uh. Rita Repulsa is admittedly fairly attractive underneath all of the, the sneering. There's a lot of very attractive Power Behind Rangers villains. Sneer. Um, <laughs> Divatox is especially attractive in uh, Z- Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, but now it's getting yeah. a little creepy. Yeah, um, I, I'm full picturing you showing up to a dungeon with like a suitcase, and you're like, before anything happens... Put this on and sneer. <laughs> God damn it, Brandon. I mean, I I don't pers- I There's like five uh, Power Rangers villains easily ahead of Rita Repulsa for me in terms of people who I'm interested, who I would I would be interested in with the Rita Repulsa from the uh, 2016 reboot being probably near the top. In, a, yeah. in front of the original Rita Repulsa, because I think that's Elizabeth Banks. So <laughs> that's just Elizabeth I'm, Banks. I'm picturing, like, if Power Rangers, like, real life villain says some evil dialogue, but they're they're trying to threaten you, and they say some dialogue, and they're just like, why are you smiling? You're like, can you just say it again, though? Say it again, though. And then... <laughs> And they're like, what? <laughs> you're Brandon, you're you're assuming that I am a sub, and this is going to be going down a very dark, a very uh w- this is the second this is the second week in which we are going down a very horny jail path very early on. Yeah. And it might be my fault. It is explicitly my yeah, fault. No, this time it's definitely your fault. This time it is definitely my fault, I won't lie. Um but uh, I've been in a group chat where we've been discussing these things and there's a joke that has been going around because of the Vaporeon uh, copy pasta. Have you ever read the Vaporeon copy pasta? I have not read the Vaporeon. Well, we're not going to go we're not going to go over the Vaporeon copy pasta. If you listener are interested in it, look it up, but definitely don't read it aloud near anyone who you don't want to hear something awful. Um 
Let's see. Vaporian <laughs> copy pasta on Reddit. Oh, let's see. Brandon, Brandon, don't do this to yourself. Free yourself yeah. from this sin. Okay, well, I'll read it after. I'm not going to... Yeah, there, yeah. There's a lot read of, that, like... Read that after. It's a lot, and it's... it's it's it It's upsetting to read for most people. For me, it's less upsetting because I'm in... I'm in a, a special oh, kind wow. of hell. It's like yeah. they're, they're statistically trying to analyze. Like, yes. would it be physically possible? Yeah. I thought it was going to be like some weird slash stuff, but this is kind of worse. Oh, no, it's way worse. It's way worse because it's using actual in-game statistics for that particular thing, which we're being incredibly vague, but let me let me, let me me tell you, this is for your own good. Yeah. I, we're protecting you. We're protecting you with this. Definitely. If you choose to not be protected from this, that's on you. That is um, on you. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to just s- jump into this week's episode because I don't... I, I realize that my brain is in such a weird state from the events of the past couple of days that, you, Brandon, your face is phenomenal, uh, that I just kind of need to get into cryptid territory. Um, Brandon, you're very... Your, your facial reactions... I lied. I kept reading it. You are scandalized. <laughs> I want to. I want to point out that while Brandon was reading that, his face was like a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like an antebellum lady. Like, <laughs> oh my, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. I um. I, so oh. yeah. So yeah, I've been that. That's a thing. Uh, but I do, I do want to get to the cryptids because my my brain has been in a weird space. And honestly, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if everyone's brain is in a weird space, particularly people who listen to this podcast. Yeah, I, I feel like we are a very unique group that most of us live in a weird space. Yeah, well, and put I mean, on our human listening... flesh suits to interact with the general population. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So, uh, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And this is Cryptopedia. I forgot uh, we didn't introduce ourselves yet. No, we didn't. We 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 thought it was I thought it was more important to introduce the uh the Porion copy pasta than us, but that's fair. Um So this is like not an advice podcast. I don't know why my brain went to advice podcast, in which we talk about cryptids and other paranormal stuff. Yeah. Uh so Brandon, this week's cryptid and yes. I've returned to cryptids. Well, no, last week was a cryptid too. Well, no, last, last week was last week was esque. cryptid. It was an event. Yeah, it was an event. So this week, our first sighting of this individual thing was in 1924. Okay. Its taxonomy is hominid. 1924 hominid. Okay. And its region is British Columbia. Brandon, I was not expecting you- that. So, and just to remind you, that's Pacific Northwest, British Columbia. Yes. Um, British Columbia, Pacific Northwest. There's, um, let's see. There's something I don't, there's only one thing I could guess, and that's, be, but I've got a different, I've got an episode written on it, and I'm not going to guess that. And it's also not w- mostly West. It's in Middle-ish. Okay. We already did Ghost Moose. Um, Ghost Moose, I don't think was D- Ghost Moose British Columbia. I thought that was Maine. It was Canada, or was it Maine? Yeah, you're right. It was Maine. The fa- the fa- the fa- phantasmal moose. Um, bipedal. Yeah. I, it's. I didn't say bipedal, but it is. Well, you said ho- hominid. A hominids aren't necessarily bipedal. Yeah, but people who say that they've seen <laughs> that's usually like when someone claims they've seen something, it's it's. It's usually that. I'm gonna call it the um, the 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 um the. Um, don't overthink it, Brandon. Uh, I just don't. I was gonna try to come up with a clever name. It, the, but it's the the don't, the, the don't Maple o- Man of BC. You're really overthinking this. So, the cryptid this week is a Sasquatch. It's a squatchy. It's a squatch. Um, which we haven't done a Sasquatch in like 50 episodes, I think. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's, let's. I, I know the exact episode the that it was. I know the exact episode yeah. it was, Brandon. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, 
In particular, though, we're going to be covering the kidnapping of Albert Ostman. Have you ever heard of this story? I have not, and this sounds like it's going to be good. Okay. So, while Harry Hominids are a mainstay of the podcast, we very rarely cover the stereotypical Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Uh, typically, uh, so, in fact, the the most recent episode that we covered it in was the Battle of Eight Canyon, episode 32 of the podcast. Wow. That was the last vanilla Bigfoot story that oh, we had. And we're on 84 now. He's really, yeah. he's in our, 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 our cover art. I, uh, he I might sure have to- is. We actually haven't we actually haven't gone over the origin of Sasquatch either, um, which I I know and I've read a book on. Uh, but one episode we will do that, and it might be a two parter because it's a thing apparently. Um, but yeah, so our our art has Bigfoot in it. Bigfoot is a part of the DNA of this show, yet we almost never cover Bigfoot cases. Yeah, um, it's more the DNA stuck to the stomach of our shirts yeah. um, of the show. <sighs> um, but I will say it is mostly my fault because most Bigfoot sightings are modern era type things. And I'm typically the one who takes modern era stuff. Um, and I have this strange obsession with Southern Bigfoot. Uh, because really Pacific Northwestern Bigfoots are a little bit more nonviolent. And generally less interesting for podcast episodes. Plus, Southern Bigfoot's got that slow draw. Do they? Do they? Have we ever had a Southern Bigfoot that had a slow draw? Get out of my canyon. It's me, Bigfoot. Get out of my swamp. Get out of my swamp. Get out of my swamp. You want some sweet tea? Imagine if Shrek, the movie Shrek... (laughs) What if Shrek, instead of having a uh, Scottish accent, had a southern draw? Yeah. <laughs> Donkey. <laughs> Donkey, get out of my what are you swamp. doing there? You gotta get oh, out of the swamp. No, this my head went into a gross spot. Did it? Yeah. Do you remember that one Take video I texted you a while back with, like, collector's editions of different items and one was, what was a Shrek ear? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You're not going to elaborate on that, okay? No, it was flashlights. Yeah, um, cl- <laughs> <laughs> there is a, there is a, there is a, a Shrek ear flashlight. There was a Shrek ear flashlight. It was and a awful. ratatouille. <laughs> the ratatouille <laughs> one was, I think, the most upsetting. To be ratatouille totally honest, it was terrible. There was a tomator. Oh, I stand corrected. That one was pretty bad too. They were all awful. They were all, they were all, all bad. Awful. They were all bad things. The worst um, is when he's like going over how collectible they are, and he goes slight wear, and then touches it. And he's like, no, don't the touch it. The Cinderella one was even, was actually the worst because oh, it had like toes on it. It had toes. Um, man, we're really earning that. We we have been really earning that explicit tag. I feel yeah. like, um. So this week's Bigfoot, or should I say Big Feet, is is that how you pluralize no, Bigfoot? No, plural is Bigfoot if you listen to the crazies. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So this week's Bigfoot um, are no exception to the rule, although it's certainly one of the stranger tales in the Bigfoot canon. Now, Albert Osman was a Canadian prospector born 1891 in Sweden. In Sweden? Sweden. He has a tiny mustache. He does. That's from later in his life um, in the picture that's shown in the show notes. Not many pictures this week because, you know, 1924 Canadian prospector. Um, In my research, I couldn't find much about Albert Osman's personal life. Uh, I found his grave, his date of death, and a few biological details, but nothing really much outside of the story. Hmm. Um, It's kind of more or less... uh, Occluded things. Oh. No, uh, I was looking for that, and I tapped on it, uh, but um, uh, the audio on my phone was all the way up, and I didn't want to ruin the episode, so I figured I'll just explain it. (laughs) Oh, okay. Uh, Um, All right, Brandon. So he died January 16th, 1975. Uh, A lot of sources say he was born around 1893. 
but as far as I could tell, 1891 is the quote unquote canonical birth of this man. Yeah. Uh, canonical. Canonical. Uh, so, admittedly, this is a signal to noise issue problem, though, because if you search Albert Osman, the kidnapping event is what comes up. So, it's really hard to dig deeper. Okay. Uh, I know that some people have gone onto like ancestry.com and pulled up a bunch of stuff on him, but honestly, who he is outside of this really doesn't matter, and we'll get into why. Um, so he is less enmeshed in the cryptozoological community, however, than most of the subjects of inquiry for this podcast, uh, in that he really only has one or two interviews that he's given on this subject. There's a book that he contributed his story to, which is a, me- a primary source that I use, an interview, and the initial article that was written about him. Everything else, he's pretty much been silent. Uh, and this is before like the cryptozoological interview conference circuit existed, because this is in this, I think, 60s is when he really started talking about it. Uh, so it's it's very, you know... It's less, there's less hay to make about Albert Osman, the individual, than typical. Okay. So, in 1924, Albert Osman went to the Toba Inlet in British Columbia. North of Vancouver, the Toba Inlet is remote, to say the least. The inlet is absolutely gorgeous from the pictures that I could find. And it's 100% British Columbia, like, uh, appeal. As somebody who's been to British Columbia and loves British Columbia as, like, a place to be, it, it, it's gorgeous. It looks like a Bob Ross painting. It does. It really does. I absolutely love it. Uh, but it's absolutely a place I could not exist in, as apparently it's swarming with grizzlies. Oh, wow. Okay. And I got a link there, Brandon. Do you want to click on that link for uh, sure. how, how it's swarming with, with grizzlies? Let me let, give me a description of that. It's uh, it's fifty six seconds long. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait. <laughs> Why did the link go away? Wait, open. Why won't it go full? Oh, okay. it. You, you, you gotta click it. You gotta <laughs> click it. You gotta click it. You gotta click it. You gotta watch it. You gotta gotta watch that video. You gotta watch it. You can see what? I don't even know how to describe this. <laughs> That's fair. I don't just. It's an animated thing that's not... But in the beginning... He sounds the like a, a prospector. Well, it's it's Granny. It's Granny from Squidbillies. Oh. It's, it's the scene where, where oh, she, all she's, the describing, she's describing the, the, the creation of the, of, uh, the world and uh, how there were just oh. so many bears in that he probably should have dialed it back a bit on the bears. <laughs> it swarms with bears. Damn. It's a visual joke in a yeah. audio medium. I like the bears uh, costume though. The bears costume, the, the, uh, the, the suit of denim in uh, stately stones of Rhine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad that that, that early Kyler actually, early Kyler's voice actor actually turned out to be a racist fuck. What? Yeah, Unknown Henson's a douchebag. Ah, oh. yeah. I'm so sad because that probably means there's never going to be another episode of Squid Billies made, uh, which is unfortunate. No, it doesn't. They could, they could uh, chef. They could chef him. Well, what they did, what they did for Sharif, uh, which is the sheriff's name, his legal name, um. So for Sharif, they they killed him off and replaced him with a new a new sheriff, and they added a whole new a whole backstory that he's a clone. Oh, and there's just a field of sheriff clones. Mm-hmm. I know way too much about Squidbillies because I've probably watched it maybe three or four times. Which that's is too many times. That's too many times, but that's I don't too many care. Times. I've watched Aqua Teen Hunger Force uh, three or four times as well, which is probably That's also too many fair, times. fair, though. I mean, that show should really be archived in the Library of Congress. Both of them should. That's, I'm not going to disagree with that. I mean, that's just kind of how the Library of Congress works. Uh, anywho, it's also incredibly isolated, which, you know, not really a big fan of isolation. Well, I am a fan of being alone and at home and indoorsy. 
but like I like I like electricity and the ability to play a game on my computer or PS4. Um so yeah. Yes. Consider a woodsman, Albert Osman has n- had no such compunctions in his trip to the region, however, because he's an outdoorsy type. Now, in some tellings of the story, it was recorded as a vacation trip, which uh, gave me pause to think about, because like, if you were a person who works outside for a living, why, why is this a thing where people who work outside for a living want to go outside. outdoors? I <sighs> don't know, because you think they'd be more prone to, like, a casino or Disney or Yeah, some well I mean Disney didn't event. exist at this point. I don't even think Mickey Mouse really existed at this point. Yeah, well just like some kind of like themed area. Theme parks didn't exist in nineteen twenty four. They had to. No. I'm pretty sure the first theme park was literally what Disney was World. The first theme park. This is the part of the show that everyone... Oh, 1846. 1876. Huh. Really? Yeah. Oh, wait. No, no, no. That's an amusement park. The first theme parks emerged in the mid-20th century with the opening of Santa Claus Land in 1946, Santa's Workshop in 1949, and Disneyland in 1955. Also, I want to point out that the fourth picture, when you search first theme park, uh, is an explosion... Of some variety. <laughs> uh, it looks it's okay. That's it looks like true. it's a controlled explosion, though. Okay, okay. For a split second, I thought that that was a real explosion of boat? something awful happening. <laughs> Just an exploding boat. Um. Yeah. So okay. I wouldn't be surprised though if the first theme park had something that exploded. No. Not at all. <laughs> the first uh, theme park had a lot of shrapnel. A lot of shrapnel. Let's be real. It, it was more of a shrapnel park that happened to have rides. <laughs> but you know, it, it was the nineteen. It was the eighteen hundreds. You, you kind of expected a little shrapnel. Yeah, plus and it was a little fine. Bit of, it was before you had to go through metal detectors at the airport. Yeah, yeah. You also had a little bit of the black lung. You know, just just a little, yeah. just a touch, and a touch of consumption for for good measure. Um. So, in most tellings of the story, though, most of the, like, uh, authoritative ones that I've seen, he took the trip to prospect for gold. Uh, Apparently, there was, like, a lost gold mine or something in the region. Like, there was a legend, something along those lines. So, he he lived in a Scooby-Doo episode. Pretty much. He was pretty much uh, the minor 49er uh, in terms of He was the minor? That was such a good episode. All of the Scooby-Doo episodes were good episodes. Let's, let's, Let's be real. Scooby-Doo is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And it wasn't at all a cash grab made by somebody who didn't understand how teenagers worked. But anywho. uh, So, allegedly, a local indigenous person warned him of the giants which inhabited the region. And based on my knowledge, this isn't exactly an anachronism. Because I think the the legend of uh, Sasquatch predates this story. Um... Or at the very least, the there there was a, a concept of like a Sasquatch hunt. It was like a local thing. I'll, I'll get into that more when we actually talk about Sasquatch's origins, which is a future episode and not this episode because it's definitely its own episode. I thought I was going to have to throw it into this episode, but it turned out I found a great source that had oh, a sure. lot more details about his events. Uh, so... Regardless, uh, it only appears in like a handful of tellings of the story, but it is one of the accounts that he gives. So I'm going to assume that uh, at least from his perspective, this happened. Um, it does feel a little bit uh, cliche and tropey, though, I will admit, because uh, that's usually the the whole like, oh, don't go down that road. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it also might be it also might be a Stephen King novel. So we don't know. We don't Regardless know. of warnings, uh, Osman decided to travel to the inlet. For three, three full nights, Osman had seen evidence that someone or something had been roaming his campsite in his sleep, stealing his food. Uh, a particular note, prunes. Prunes. It took us prunes. So um, Bigfoot's an old lady. Or somebody who really likes Dr. Pepper. I really like Dr. Pepper. Why? There's prunes in Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. 
There's everything sure in Dr. Pepper. There's 23 distinct flavors in Dr. Pepper. Can you there, taste them all? There's That used to be a game that people would play is, uh, uh, if you'd smoke some of the uh, devil's lettuce. And then you close your eyes and you sip Dr. Pepper. And then somebody said a flavor and then you just tasted the flavor that they said. That's awful. I think that's more of your brain uh, filling in the blanks oh, that's than more it of is a brain thing yeah. than it is real things in Dr Pepper. I like mean, you that's can drink not a Sprite. scientific analysis. You can drink Sprite stretch. probably or Coke or Pepsi because we gotta we gotta go across the aisle and give Pepsi some due because we've been talking about Coca Cola products. Do we? Because I'm I'm a Coke man myself. I am a Coke man myself. If I have to drink Coke, I'd rather drink Dr Pepper. But yeah. if I have to drink anything, I'd drink Coke with a particular uh, emphasis on vanilla Coke. Ah, yes. The vanilla Coke mm. is very good. That is, that is, if I'm going to drink a Coke, that is the Coke I will drink. Although, typically, if you're in one of those freestyle machines, you also have access to vanilla cream soda uh, from A&W, oh, which is no. the come up. Yes. That's the correct choice. If you're choosing soda, that is the choice. Vanilla cream no no nothing else about it now i want vanilla cream soda but i can't because i'm quarantining currently uh <laughs> you can get it uh, uh delivered possibly i could i could get i can get it delivered from my local pizza place i know that for a fact yeah you could you could uh just have it delivered it That's could be true. on your doorstep it could but i also need to save money regardless this has nothing to do uh with osman at all um unless unless he found the first freestyle machine in those woods which i don't think he did based on my my reading of the story uh but we never know maybe he just didn't tell people maybe you just misinterpreted the text (laughs) yeah maybe he kept it a secret because he wanted to have those freestyle tastes for himself although that's this is when coke was still fun and had cocaine in it (laughs) the good old days (laughs) When your soft drinks had hardcore drugs. Yeah, I mean, you know, the good old days. The good times. A- anywho, so rather than get the hell out of there, Osman was in- resolved to determine the source of the disturbances. Despite the fact that o- um, Occam's razor dictated it was probably a grizzly. Although he said, nah, it couldn't have been a bear. It would have been torn all apart. Blah, 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 blah. I'm a Canadian prospector, Swedish man. Mm. Uh, anywho. On the fourth night, Osman fell asleep while he was trying to feign sleep, uh, like to catch the whatever it was off guard. I shit you not, he tried he he tried to pretend to, to like sleep while it was. So he yeah, did it, what it, I did when I was it in my bedroom as a child playing Game Boy, and I heard my parents coming down the hallway. Basically, or a child trying to catch Santa Claus. Yeah. Oh, I had a, a, a stormtrooper motion sensor. And uh, I hit it inside of the Christmas tree one year to try to catch the Santa Claus. Didn't work. He's a sly bastard. He is a sly bastard. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Or he watched you do it. Uh, Anywho. So he was awoken, however, by the sensation of his sleeping bag, um, which had his gun and knapsack, apparently, being placed on a horseback. Wait, what? So it felt like being placed on a horseback, but he was being carried by something. Okay. The journey in his sleep bag bag would take three whopping hours. At so he points, just pretended to sleep for three hours. For three hours, or he just took it for three hours. Bearing in mind, the man had a gun. Yeah. Uh... So, at the end of the trip, Osman was then unceremoniously deposited in front of four creatures that may best be described as Sasquatch. Okay. They look like a family. Old man, old lady, and two young ones. A boy and a girl. The boy and the girl seemed to be scared of me. The old lady didn't seem too pleased about what the old man dragged home. But the old man was waving his arms and telling them all what he had in mind. They all left me then. Um, how does he... He knows what they were saying? No, he doesn't know what they were saying. He was watching, like, gesticulations and listening to what they were saying. Okay. Like, like the, the tones that they were making. So, the eight-foot-tall male of the group had been the one responsible for bringing Osman to the family of Sasquatch. 
Osman's account of the interaction between the male and female admittedly sounds a bit more like a sitcom interaction between a husband and wife than not. It's yeah. got a very married with children vibe to it. Yeah, it, it for sure. It doesn't seem, I mean, I don't know how Sasquatch interact with each other, but it, that's not how I pictured it. It, I, I'm, I'm like imagining, uh, uh, the, the now instead of thinking of married with children, of course, my brain is going to Futurama and thinking of Leela in that one episode with the person who pretends to be a Cyclops. Spoiler alert for a show that's been canceled like five times. Um, there's, I was describing, um, the, where the Mandalorian happened in the Star Wars movies to somebody at work. And then when I said Yoda died, somebody goes, What? What? And then I said, no. No, sir. Do you know how long ago that movie came out? It is well That's... past the point where I can talk about that. Oh, what is that? 80, 82 or something like that? It was That's in the Empire. 80s. It was in the it 80s. It was Empire, I, said, I don't right? know what year it was, but I was like, that was in the 80s. You do not get to play. You get, ah. Uh. Yeah, like... That's not even the biggest spoiler from that franchise. 1980. Uh, yeah. that, that's not even the biggest spoiler from the the, the franchise at yeah. all. Like, you had 40 years to to f- see that. Like, the, yeah. I, I'm allowed to say it out loud. Also, like... Lay's his sister and, and, and Darth Vader's his father, too. If you didn't know that, sir. Excuse me, What? What? C-3PO has a fleshy penis. <laughs> that one actually is a little <laughs> terrifying. Uh, I don't have words for that one. Um, it's a okay. I hate that. I hate you. Uh, so the exact ages of the Sasquatch are in question. In some tellings, there exists one young Sasquatch and three adults. While in others, there are two children and two adults. Regardless of the telling, there exists two males and two females in the family of Bigfoot, perhaps suggesting some form of family union. Um, I'm honestly thinking that the two adults, two young people, that's the one I'm going to be going with as canonical, uh, because that's the one that Osman tells. But I've seen people tell the story differently. Uh, In regards to the setting of his capture and internment, Osman gave the following description as collected in Sasquatch, The Apes Among Us by John Green. Uh, not to be confused with the... Isn't isn't John Green the guy who wrote The Fault in Our Stars? Is he? I don't know who wrote that. I think that's something green. Uh, John Green, yeah. Okay. So not to be confused with that John Green. This is a separate John Green. Different John Greens. This is a John Green who is writing books in the 70s. Um... Which I pulled this from a Bigfoot site, which had basically copy and pasted the book. I, I could see to now. School hmm. with a um, an indiv- individual whose last name was Smith, and uh, we went to go do a factory tour of a, a local manufacturing place. Um, hmm. But you had to provo- provide uh, proof of citizenship and a valid driver's license before you could get in because they did some DOD stuff, and. Uh, even though he was with the school, they wouldn't let him in because they thought he had a fake driver's license because they because his last name was Smith. <laughs> and he was like, "No, it's my real name. Let me in. This is for school." Smith, Smith, Smith. Uh, anywho, so I could see now that I was in the small valley or basin, about eight or ten acres, surrounded by high mountains on the south and on the southeast side. There was a V-shaped opening about 8 feet wide at the bottom and about 20 feet high at the highest point. That must be the way I came in. But how will I get out? The old man was sitting near the opening. So, uh, Osman had a fairly large space to roam about, finding uh, a spring in the valley, which he used as a water source during his time in the valley. Um, And during his exploration of the surroundings, he even found the sleeping place of the creatures. On my way back, I noticed where these people were sleeping. On the east side wall of this valley was a shelf in the mountainside with overhanging rock looking something like a big undercut in a big tree about 10 feet deep and 30 feet wide. The floor was covered with lots of dry moss and they had some kind of blankets woven of narrow strips of cedar bark packed with dry moss. They looked very practical and warm with no need of washing. Um, Interesting that he's calling them people. He calls them people basically during the entirety of this uh story um 
he doesn't call them creatures typically it's usually uh people man woman um very human pronouns yeah. and descriptors for them um which is, despite... I guess, that's fine i mean they're big and hairy but also like they're doing weird family unit stuff yeah well not weird family unit stuff primates do family units that's a thing yeah true because because primates tend to be that that's just their 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 shtick um Anyhow, during this time, two children, because honestly, as I said before, this seems to be most pre- prevalent in the tellings, and this is the one that I'm, the, the Apes Among Us version is the one that I'm using as our canonical version, um, took an interest in Osman. The duo watched him from various hiding places and took a major interest in his belongings. In one case, Osman gave the boy his empty snuff box, which he allegedly brought to his sister and, pres- and presumed father with great glee. This is important. Remember the snuff box. Okay. Snuff box. Remembered. Where's uh-huh. the gun, though? We'll get to that. Has he tried to leave yet, or is he just like, this is my life now? Because it feels like he's just decided this is his life now. This is the first day. This is all happening on the first day so far. Okay. Everything that I've described has happened on the first day. Um, he, he, he takes a time. There's a lot of him describing his supplies and all that stuff, and, like, his situation, and blah, 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 blah. I cut it out. Um, it should be noted that that's there, uh, which, you know, as we've covered on this show before, uh, and a lot of people know, I would assume, I'd hope, uh, when someone tells a story and it's very, very detailed, that's usually problematic. Yeah. When Especially... People especially if you have been kidnapped by a Sasquatch. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's true. Because usually when people add a, a lot of detail, they're, they're adding, they're, they're, that means they're lying because they're trying to sh- shove in so much detail to be like, see, I can't be lying. I put so much detail. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the, that's, yeah. You're like, um, if you go to the gas station, you just say, I went to the gas station. You don't say, I went to the gas station. I know I went to the gas station because I had my phone in my left pocket and my uh, this brand of chapstick in my other pocket because I always keep in that. You don't just start listing shit that you had. And then I went into the gas station. I bought one bag of Funyuns, uh, three Ho-Hos, a Ding Dong, and um, a big old Colt 40. There is, it's a Colt 45, John. Yeah, I know. That's the drink. <laughs> well, it's a Colt 40. Now. It's a Colt 40? It's a Colt 40 now. It's a 40, 40, uh, it's a 40 of Colt 45. It's a 40 of Colt 45. Someone took a drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, after the first day, Osman attempted to leave the valley. He packed his kit, okay. rolled his sleeping bag, and chambered his gun. So he does actually try to leave after the first day. Okay, good. Um, I started for the opening in the wall. The old man got up, held up his hands as though he would push me back. I pointed the opening, wanting to go out, but he stood there, pushing towards me, and said something that sounded like, Soka Soka. I backed up about 60 feet. I did not want to be too close. I thought if I had to shoot my way out, a 30-30 might not have much effect on this fellow. It might make him mad. I only had six shells, so I decided to wait. There must be a better way than killing him. In order to get out of here, uh, get a- in order to get out from here. I went back to my campsite to figure out some way to get out. So, recollecting the younger two's affinity for him, he resolved to leverage them for his escape. He decided to put some snuff in his snuff box the next time he gave it to the boy in an effort to give <laughs> give the father Sasquatch a taste for snuff. This is not a joke, Brandon. <laughs> his escape plan is to get them addicted to tobacco. This is not oh. a joke. This is not a joke. He literally says this. So I decided next time I'd give the young fellow my snuff box to leave a few grains of snuff in it. He might give it to the old man. Get, it might give, he might give the old man a taste of it. So his goal is to become, he's like, well, they lo- won't let me out. But if I get them addicted to something, then I'll become their dealer and sole supply of this. So his escape plan is to become a snuff dealer to Sasquatch. He is effectively a Bigfoot drug dealer at this point. That is that big. is his goal. A, uh, that is his that is his effort to get out of this canyon. That is, is becoming a 
Bigfoot drug dealer. I'm, I mean, I will say that that's not far off from different like plans that we've had in like different versions of Dungeons and Dragons. Like that's that's not. You're outlandish. not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> But Dungeons and Dragons is outlandish for us because we literally do choose ridiculous things on purpose. Yeah. Oh, a thirty thirty, by the way, is a lever action rifle. I just wanted to get an idea in my head of like what it was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's I I think it's a I don't think it's a big game hunting rifle based on the things he said he shot with it. Um, he shot a deer and a waterfowl of some kind at some point in the story. Um, and you don't need crazy crazy powerful stuff to take no. that down it's not like he was shooting grizzlies which in retrospect he probably should have brought a gun that could shoot a grizzly considering the fact he was in an area with a bunch of grizzlies but regardless so the plot ultimately works okay the sasquatch begin to acquire a taste for the snuff with uh, ostman trading taste of it for food uh <laughs> particularly a sweet tasting grass root Ostman takes some time to describe the individuals of the family. The old lady was a meek old thing. The young fellow was by this time quite frankly. The girl would not hurt anybody. Her chest was flat like a boy's. No development like young ladies. I am sure if I could get the old man out of the way, I could have easily brought this girl out with me to civilization. But what good would no. that have been? No. No. But what good? Brandon, give him a second. Give him a second. I want to give a slap him on the back of the hand. No. Get, give him a second. But what good would that have been? I would have to keep her in a cage for public display. I don't think we have any right to force our way of life on other people, and I don't think they would like it. So kudos to him. I agree with that, that last part. That last bit. I don't like all of the lead up to it. Oh, no, 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 no. The whole development content con- comment was a little bit weird considering yeah. he considered like, this uh, to be a child. She didn't have any boobs. But I thought about maybe I'd take her, even though she doesn't have any boobs. Maybe uh, we could do stuff, have but no then tits, I have to keep her in a know. cage. Eh. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, no. No, no. Uh, but he continues. And this is where it gets better. The young fellow must have been between 11 and 18 years old. Okay. Um, so, yeah, big swing on that one. A, a huge swing. Uh, and about seven feet tall, and he might weigh about 300 pounds. His chest would be 50 to 55 inches, and his waist about 36 to 38 inches. He uh, had wide well, jaws. Hmm? Did he say how seven feet tall? Okay, so he's one foot taller than me. Mm-hmm. 300 pounds. His waist. I don't think those the, those measurements are correct. I don't think so either, but so that's I'm a whole other thing. six foot, about 200 pounds, mm-hmm. and I have a... A 34 waist. Well, Brandon, also keep in mind that the cube square law does apply. Yes. You have to remember that. Because once you get bigger, the, the taller you get, it, it cubes the the weight increases, like, you know, yeah. dramatically. So, anywho. <laughs> <laughs> I like I love I love how that's the thing that tripped you up. The thing that tripped me up we're about to get into. Don't worry. Okay. Uh but I love that's the thing that tripped you yeah, up. Yeah, I'm the, like, but the, what size Levi's would he wear? That doesn't make sense. He's wearing some pretty small Levi's. All Here's things jorts. considered. Oh, torn off jorts. He's wearing smaller Levi's than uh uh what's his name? Uh, ben Kissel. It turns oh, out. Oh, oh. Is this just Ben Kissel? It might well, Ben Kissel's a Sasquatch. We all know this. Yes. So it might just be Ben Kissel. Uh, so he had wide jaw, narrow forehead that slanted upward, round at the back about four or five inches higher than the forehead. The hair on the hands were about six inches long. The hair on the rest of the body was short and thick in places. The woman's hair... Oh, I made a mistake. Uh, <laughs> I, I pressed the wrong button and it like reset to the front. The oh. woman's hair on the forehead had an upward turn like some women have. They call it bangs <laughs> among women hairdos. Nowadays, the old lady could have been anything between 40 to 70 years old. He's really bad at guessing ages. Yeah. She was over seven feet tall. She would have been 500 to 600 pounds. I like that they have bangs. 
I do too. It's reminding me of the uh, the Sasquatch from the Venture Brothers, There's... where they put the wig on it. Oh yeah, and shave it. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you didn't tell me uh, that Sasquatch was a man. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, so. Overall, a fairly difficult description for Bigfoot, although I'm not 100% sure how you age a Bigfoot as, we, you know, whatever. But I can't age a human, so, you know, I'm not the best metric on that one. I'm really bad at aging humans. Like, It's really how bad. far from me do I think they are. Like, I can't look at someone and guess how old they are. I can look at someone and guess how far from me they are in age. I have three metrics for age, um, and that's... Younger than me, near my age, older than me. Yep. Those are the three ranges I can tell you. Everything out else outside of that is witchcraft. Which is why you can't ever work at a carnival, and it's kind nope. of a shame. No, yeah. My carny days are long gone. As well as my 30 under 30 days. There's... No, you, 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 there's, there's still a chance. I they they do that at the end of the year, Brandon. I'm turning thirty this year. I'm not going to be under thirty. Oh, the chance is gone. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, it you does. Could be in the forty under forty. I don't think that exists. Forty over forty. The four billion under f- four billion. Yeah, <laughs> I'm in that. I'm assuming. Uh-huh. I'd hope, but you know, whatever. Regardless, the remaining of the description continues to highlight the typical description of Sasquatch. Hair nearly everywhere, large padded feet, high agility, and a powerful frame. It does get a little weird, though, because this is a Cryptopedia episode, and of course it gets a little weird. I wouldn't have picked this if it didn't get a little weird. Um, So in his description of the mother figure, she had very wide hips and a goose-like walk. She was not built for beauty or speed. Some of those lovable... Brasiers and uplifts would have been a great improvement on her looks and her figure. <laughs> yes, let's sexualize this. This, this ape. This, let's sexualize this Bigfoot. So she had some. <laughs> he said she needs a, a, a lifting bra. Yes, he super did. So, like, all I, I can I say about stealing her daughter. But she didn't have any any tits. But then you look at the mom. But she the got mother. Too many of them. Oh boy! <laughs> the, the bazongas. But oh boy, did gravity do a number on her? Oh boy! Oh boy! Um, She's got a face for radio. Oh god! So I the only takeaway I have from this is that Osman may have had a thing for bigger women. But you know, Osman might have had a thing for bigger women. Osman might have, have masturbated you know in front of an ape. Oh, he definitely did. <laughs> that happened. <laughs> he leaves it out, but you gotta look. You gotta read the in the in the silence. The 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 blank pit. Like, it's like he gets rescued. Like Osman, why are you naked? He's like they were naked, so I figured I'd try to blend in. You know, uh, you know, you know. I love how a a Swedish Canadian prospector now has like a very bad Brooklyn accent. A very bad northeast-ish accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a very like, bad, like, I like, like the way their throat feels on my balls. I don't know. What, they, what uh, can I tell hey, you? Hey, you know, whatever. Give me a slice of pizza covered in maple Look syrup. Look at this. If you I, give you them know, some Canadian. snuff, they do a trick. <laughs> the trick is to coat it in snuff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, this is how they, it's a barter system. It's how they trade. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, jeez. You do put a line of snuff along your ding dong. Oh, Oh, man. I hate it. I hate, I hate it. But I was the one who said it. (laughs) (laughs) You you put the snuff on your penis and then they bring you berries and let let you uh, touch their nipples and such. So where does this fall on the furry alignment chart? I don't know. Because, like, is this dangerously cheesy? Is this, um... Where, where does it fall? <laughs> do, you know the, do you know the chart that I'm talking about? I don't. I don't. 
Am oh. I gonna feel sad the same way I felt when I looked at the Vaporeon creepy pasta? G- give me a second. It's not. A, that's also not a creepy pasta. Oh, sorry, I, I misspoke. But also, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, it's not intended as a creepy pasta, but yeah. it oh. could be. <laughs> okay, here it is. This is the this is the furry scale. Brandon, I want you to tell me where you think uh, the furry lies, where it lies on that scale. Oh. So top left is a a, a cat girl that's not furry, 10%. 50%, that's an anthro cat person that's, that's furry. 70%, that's getting close to cat-like features, so dangerously furry. And then what's 100%, Brandon? <laughs> Dangerously cheesy. And it's a picture it's of Chester who? the Cheetah. It is, in fact, Chester the Cheetah. Yeah. So the, the, the 10% not furry is just like your, your run-of-the-mill anime um, animal cat girl. person. It, it's somebody wearing, it's somebody wearing uh, cat ears. Yeah. Your 50% is like um, someone got, got cursed to look part animal. Your 70%, well, that's a furry. That's, your, that's literally a furry. Ah, uh, yes. Your uh, your seventy percent is um, the the cat's three uh, D movie, and uh, mm-hmm. then you've got Chester the Cheetah. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, now now I'm upset that you brought up cat. You you've you've infer you've uh, incurred the dark magic on this world. Oh yes. Oh, you bad man. Dark magic bad, is bad only man. magic. Uh, um. So yeah, yeah. I I don't think he actually. Did any of this, but let's imp- let's pre- pretend in our reality that it happened. Um, so, Osman also indicates that the valley was not their permanent home by his estimation. Rather, it was a stopover in the region, with the sweet roots being the primary food source. While there are large animals that are herbivores, I question the calorie density of the diet eaten by these creatures, as described by Osman, who allegedly spent six days with them, which would be more than long enough for him to see a fairly decent uh, approximation of their consumption yeah. habits, considering they were active, and that the children were allegedly playing and, you know, rolling around the That's around the, he got them addicted the area. to all that snuff. Well, he did get them addicted to snuff, that is true. Um, but in northern climates, it can be difficult to gather food in the winter months, and there is a higher need for insulation. And as a reminder, I'm not a zoologist, but this and this potentially may have an obvious answer as caribou and reindeer are thing, but quadrupeds have alternate requirements for survival. So like most of the, the animals that I can think of that exist in this particular part of the Pacific Northwest, a lot of them are some form of carnivore. Most of the mammals, yeah. um, not all of the mammals are carnivores as once again, reindeer and caribou are a thing. Reindeer, caribou, red squirrels. Are red squirrels in that area? Because I don't, I don't think red squirrels. They are... gotta have some form of squirrel. That's at not least true. a squirrel girl. Listen, <laughs> why are you bringing it? Why are you bringing up squirrel girl after we talk about the furry alignment chart, the furry scale? I don't why are you know. doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? I don't know. <laughs> don't do this to me. We're not going into this. Okay. We're not going into this. Because I don't want to, I don't want to go down this path on a public, a public forum. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is a path not for a recording to be archived in the annals of history. Yeah, the annals. <laughs> Camma. Um. Hmm. So, regardless of cal- caloric need and body shaming, Osman reached a whopping six days with the Sasquatch, as I mentioned before. During his capture, he was not poorly treated by the creatures, and the older man slowly inched closer to him with the whole snuff thing. Um, yeah, he puts his foot out the bathroom stall door and wiggles it a little bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, it was on the sixth day when he brewed a particularly strong cup of coffee that the patriarch of the group decided to come close to him. Taking a pinch of snuff for himself, the Sasquatch then... Uh, Osman taking a pinch of snuff for himself. The Sasquatch then ripped the snuff box from him and ate the whole box in one gulp <laughs> and licked it clean. I'll let Osman describe what happened next in his own words. 
After a few minutes, his eyes began to roll over in his head. He was looking straight up. I could see he was sick. Then he grabbed my coffee can that was quite cold by this time, and he emptied it into his mouth, grounds and all. That did no good. He stuck his head between his legs and rolled forward a few times away from me. He then began to squeal like a stuck pig. I grabbed my rifle and said to myself, this is it. If he comes for me, I will shoot him plumb between his eyes. But he started for the spring. He wanted water. I packed my sleeping bag in my pack sack with a few cans that I had left. The young fellow ran over to his mother. She began to squeal. I started for the opening in the wall, and I, and just as I made it, the related reed was right behind me. I fired one shot at the rock over her head. I guess she had never seen a rifle fire before. She turned and ran inside the wall. I injected another shell in the barrel of my rifle and started downhill, looking back over my shoulder every so often to see if they were coming. The Sasquatch so would not follow. His plan worked. Yeah, his, his plan, plan worked. worked. Perfectly. His plan worked Tactical exactly genius. the way that he had hoped it would, which is bizarre to say the least. Um, so the Sasquatch would ultimately not follow, however, and he would make his way back to Vancouver, ending his tale. Now, Brandon, before yes. we get into him telling his story, what do you think happened after this? After, do you mean when he got back, back to, to civilization? Tell me, or, um, yeah, tell, tell me what you think happens. I want you. I want to hear your thoughts. So I imagine he went, um, contacted some form of wildlife authority or research center, and uh, brought them back. And they, even if they weren't there, if they migrated back to their primary uh, dwelling, there was def- there's evidence. Of the in the area, and it was a pretty great discovery. And so, Brandon, have you been paying attention to our podcast at all during the eighty-four episodes that we've recorded? No, because 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 <laughs> it sounds like you haven't. <laughs> um, so as you may expect, if you're paying attention to the podcast, uh, Ospin told no one his story when it happened because he feared the repercussions of the outlandishness of the story. Ospin would sit on the story for about, and Brandon, I want you to guess how many years he sat on it. Um, I'm going to say at least seven to ten years. Thirty-three years. So I was right. I said at least. I you said were at technically least correct. A minimum of, seven, of, of, of like seven to ten years. At which point he told his story to the local newspaper, The Province, in 1957. Interestingly, this does predate the Patterson-Gimlin film by about 10 years, robbing me of the easiest skepticism. It should be noted, however, that this is coincidentally a year in which Bigfoot activity began to take off and stories began to come out. I think it also is the year that Bigfoot, the word Bigfoot, was coined. So, how about that? Osman even signed a solemn declaration under oath that his story was true under the Canadian Evidence Act. And as everyone knows, the act of signing an affidavit means that there's no way you could ever lie about anything ever. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you don't realize that my voice is dripping with sarcasm in that, it is. Um, so arguments can be made both ways that uh, Abric- Ospin fabricated the story to cash in on the trend or that he finally felt comfortable in telling his story because there was a trend. Uh, that being said, the delay in his story really makes it questionable, like, without a doubt. In addition to the fact that a primatologist, John Napier, points out the same issue I pointed out earlier. Osman's story fails to convince me, primarily on the grounds of the limited re- food resources in the area. So it turns out, I'm not the only person who thinks the caloric density of that region is is complete dog shit for a... Uh, uh, <laughs> presumed herbivore so hey i did a thing from reading enough of these podcast researching enough of these episodes because this is like what the 42nd episode yeah that i've written or something like that yeah, 42. So, um overall an interesting story but in the absence of evidence it is little more than that which is pretty much the ending of every single one of our podcasts. 
Yeah. So, this one's not going to be any different then. Not any uh, different. So, yeah. Uh, that's the story of Albert Osman. He's also not the only person who's alleged being kidnapped by Bigfoot. Um, Is that just a thing? That's a thing. There's a couple people who have uh, alleged it. I was going to bring them in, but the episode was... This story was long enough on its own that it didn't need any extra punching up. Uh, so I'll probably save them for another episode. Um, whether they're a whole episode or like a, a multi-parter. Or not a multi-parter, like a uh, multi-story episode is another. Yeah. Who's <laughs> It was like, I got lucky. Uh, there's one that I, that I thought was going to turn into like a... Uh, there's not a lot. And it, it'll put three of them on one episode. And then it turned out being a whole thing. I got a whole thing yeah. out of one of those. That was a great delivery. Um, but yeah, so it's a weird story. Uh, it's yeah. interesting. This is also uh, near Vancouver Island, by the I, way. I really... Oh, yeah. Uh, highest uh, population density of um, uh, cougars. Vancouver Island. I know that because of the show alone. Great show. Highest population density of cougars. So there's just a lot of older women who are just looking for younger men. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, let's make it. All right. I'll bankroll it. We're going to make another version of the show alone. But instead of being a bunch of people <laughs> stuck on an <laughs> island filled with cougars and whoever can live the longest, it's we get a lot of older women who are looking for young men. We get a lot of young men and we drop them off on an island and they have to survive the longest without being... Um, things by cougars so here's the question uh what is the preference of the younger men uh not that not that okay not that um brandon are you suggesting a show in which non-consensual acts occur because that doesn't sound good no it's all going to be consensual no well nothing ever happens right but 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 Brandon. Well, let's Brandon. let's fill it. I left out the most important part, which is the men with tranquilizer darts and trees, right? So as the cougars are closing in on their prey, they get tranked. <laughs> Brandon, what? Are you right? talking about tranquilizing grown women? Yeah, once they get tranked, they, we notify the young man, sir, you're about to get, get taken by a cougar. We stop them, but this does mean that you've lost the show and forfeit the, the winnings, uh... So, and then they just what? take him off the island. You might as well just roll and die. <laughs> you might as well play Wheel of Fortune. You basically are describing Wheel of Fortune with more steps. Yeah. But still, they have to, like, find their own food resources and survive the longest, hide. But it's still, it's still Wheel of Fortune with extra steps. How close are these individuals getting, though? And, like, what's the incentive for the, the cougar to chase after the young men if they're going to just be tranked? Um, well, they're, they're hopped up on hormones. So, so they, they're in this kind of, like, horny frenzy. And then the young men have to survive <clears throat> on their own the longest. And then they don't really get... They'll get within, I'm, like, not I'm, striking range. They'll get I'm within so one grand in length. I'm so glad this is at the end of the episode. I'm so glad this is at the end of the episode. So they, when they get within, like, six feet of the, the would-be victim, they what get if, tranked safely. All right. Getting tranked is never safe, Brandon. Like, you realize that, right? Oh, like, I mean, there's always the an head. inherent no risk. No headshots. No headshots. That doesn't matter. What if you trank someone and they go down and they trip over a rock and crack their head? That's why you sign waivers. You get them to sign a waiver you first. Can't, you, so we're not held liable. Brandon, how many people... Okay, so... Hello, ma'am. Would you be interested in participating in a reality show experience wherein you hunt a human being who is younger than this you? This is why you're not the pitch man. You find the said cougar and you go, hey... How would you like it if you get 10 nice young lads, right? You're just alone on an island together. Who says whatever's going to happen is going to happen? We won't even be there. But then, like, we, we're really there with the tranquilizer darts. But they don't have to know that. Brandon, 
But they, they we also provide them. We provide them nightmare. with free food. Like they don't have to fend for themselves. We, they have their own like food stations. So the cougars, they're not the ones struggling. They are. They're always like, they need to be on the top of their game because these young lads, they're fast. So they have to be I'm able to s- run through the jungle. I'm so glad I have the keys to all of the Cryptopedia accounts because I would not want you to ever, from the official Cryptopedia account, say, "Hey, let's do this thing, someone." <laughs> Because the thing that you're describing is so grossly illegal in every sense of the word. Or there's nothing non-consensual happening. It's that they have, like, really bright red lipstick, and if they get a smooch on you, that means that you got got and you're you're forfeit from the game. That's still kind of a non-consensual kiss, though. You're right. The trank was the better idea. No, no, none of these are good ideas. None of these are good ideas. This is all bad. This is all problematic, what you're describing. Mm, I don't know. Agree to disagree. I, 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 you're not allowed to make any legal decisions for the podcast, Brandon. The, that's right. Our lawyer does the legal things. I, no, I, we don't have a lawyer, but you're not allowed to. You're not allowed. You're just not allowed. I, I can't steer the ship. <laughs> you're not allowed in the same room as all this stuff. <laughs> no one else is in the room while it happens. Applies to you. You're the. You're the yeah. no one else. You're the. You're the. the I'm not allowed to burr. talk to the extreme restraints representative when they try to finally give us our giant check for endorsing them so oh much. My gosh. I would love to have a Extreme Restraints sponsorship. I also would love that. I would forego having any other sponsor if, like, they're like, listen, it's not a lot of, like, we're not going to give you a lot, and you're not allowed to have any other sponsors, but we'll sponsor you. I would gladly take that over, like, f- um, I'm not going to shout on any uh, other sponsors in case somebody else wants to sponsor us. We're never going to get sponsors. This 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 podcast is sponsor poison. We no, just talked not. about it. A- Brandon, we just talked about a game, a reality show. Oh, kitty cat. We just talked about a reality show in which women are either tranquilized for chasing men or they non-consensually plant kisses on men's necks. Yeah, that's what we call quality television. That's what we call not getting a sponsorship. Um, I mean, we could even be sponsored by whatever brand lipstick that the women wear. Do they want, do they really want to be associated with that? Do you think they really want to be associated with that? (laughs) Because the answer is no. Yeah. Or what about the Trent company then? We could be sponsored by Trent and they're like, look, we take down a full sized human like that immediately. If it's taking a full sized human like that immediately, you might be murdering people. It might just be murder. No, well, then we'll just have extra bags around and we'll replace all their blood. Like, you, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll have, like, a bag to transfuse blood in and then an empty one that takes the blood out on the other hand. And what then is... we'll replace the blood in their body so there's no more tranquilizer in it. What did you just say to me? That's how you fix if somebody's got the poison, right? You You get a bag of blood to put into them. And then an empty bag of blood for taking out. And then you take out the bad blood at the same time as you're putting in the new good blood. What did you just say? You know what? I'm going to end the podcast at this point. That was that was a moment that you just... That was something no, that you no, just cat, laid on no, me. No, no, cat. No, 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 no. I hope, I hope the cat just <laughs> destroys something at this no, point. She's... She, no, no. She's, she's chewing on all the cables. Yeah, you earned that one no, for your... Your 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 bad pitches. Oh, she's nope. going for it. <laughs> no. So, listeners, I'm watching his cat literally uh, move up into frame and grab at the wire so she can chew on it. Yeah, and she can't. It's a no. No. She doesn't care. No, she's purring. She's actually quite happy that she's potentially chewing through expensive things. 
yeah, that's that gives her joy. That 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 is her Marie Kondo inspired joy moment. It is. It's her favorite thing is to like potentially hurt stop things. <laughs> oh, it's gonna make it harder to. It's gonna make buying my food more like of a stressful thing. Cool. Let yeah. me do that thing. <laughs> um. So our website is cryptopediacast dot com. If you're not scared off by Brandon's Cougar Island pitch. Um, our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. Twitter is at CryptopediaCast. Uh, email is CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We have a Patreon. The link is in the show notes. And we have some jackalopes. I think it's your turn to rattle them off because we, we traded off on on uh, yes. the other person's episode. Our jackalopes are Clay Sinclair, the OG. Um, I mean, he wishes he could be as good as Phasmophobia as I am is. Uh, we've yeah. got the Marty Von Party. Bird Schneider, I forget the state of which his bones are. We forgot that state a long time ago. Let's just assume that they're... Let's assume it's in a, a quantum state of he, both you know hollow what? and not. He, where's bon- he doesn't have bones right now. You remember that commercial from like the 2000s where it's like, what happened to her? She smoked pot and now she's just a puddle on the couch. I hated those commercials. That's... That's the aughts. No. The aughts had some no. terrible commercials. Also, Brandon is no. still fighting with this cat. Um, <laughs> she's terrible. Uh, Jonathan Shepard and fuck Andrew Jackson. Mm-hmm. That is correct. Uh, we got a Facebook group that is like really popping off for some reason. Make posts in that, I guess, if you guys want to. But like, also, there's a Discord. And you should totally join that because we're more active there and, like, you're more likely to get uh, responses from me or Brandon. Typically, it's actually Brandon more than me because my phone doesn't do Discord messages really well and I'm usually uh, napping during the day. So that's just the way my life works. Um, If you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe. Uh, There were some problems with that. Pretty much, I think the only place you can really consistently rate and review is on... uh, uh, iTunes. I think it's so. probably like iTunes and a lot. I just put you down and you could just come back up. Why do you do this? Um, well, I think a lot of the other ones just like basically look at other places and just copy the feeds. Yeah, pretty much. But whatever. I don't. Honestly, just the better thing you can do is share it with people. Yeah. And like share let people, people. know. Um, probably um, not a boss. Or an HR department. Definitely don't share with that. Uh, stop. No. Why not an HR department? I don't know why. I, we definitely have HR Fuck listeners, Brandon. All the way you off. know that for a fact. Fuck all the way off. What are you doing? <laughs> stop. Stop. <sighs> if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send those in too. I'm working on one right now. <sighs> this cat man. She's adorable. You're lucky you're cute. Or- I mean, that's that's cats in a nutshell. Stop. She's literally going stop for the parts that plug in. Stop. Do you want me to do your plugs for you <laughs> no. while you're dealing you with the cat? You can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. I'm on Instagram at mu 2057 My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. My email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. <laughs> There's my clapper. All right, there's that. And if I'm looking at the thing, my waves are forming. Lube up the throat. <sighs> oh, that's some hot throat lube. Testing. Wave, wave, wave. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. <laughs> I, I hate yes. that every that single... That was an interesting fact. Every single week, I have to do this. <laughs> but whatever. Okay. Uh, so three, two, one.